Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Today we will continue with part 3 of chapter 6 interfacing and communication under our computer architecture and organization course. So thank you very much for supporting me and stay with me again for this course and uh, under this semester. So without further ado, let's start our class. Okay, under the part three, we are going to talk about the buses. So buses means exactly so the bus. This means that the connection that you have between all those components inside your computer. So basically, if you look at the component inside your computer, uh, this one is where the motherboard comes in. Okay. So it is thread. Uh, it's a set of uh, lines or hardware uh, highway inside your computer that interconnects all those uh, main structure of your computer. It means that through buses, we get access to the CPU, main memory, input device, auxiliary storage, and also output devices. So all of these are connected under the system bus. So if you look at your devices, your CPU, this one is a quite old CPU, which is under uh, 1978 Intel. So this one A086 is quite famous. Okay, so if you look at all those uh, connection in the PC, they are re they are representing buses. Okay, so we have okay in this case A representing addresses, D representing data in or data out, S representing chip select, G representing uh, read enable, and W representing write enable so all of this is basically the highway inside your computer that interconnects all those components inside your pc so when you look at bus bus is basically a pathway between the multiple device so inside your cpu itself it has its own buses inside your motherboard okay outside of your cpu they have their own buses as well Inside the CPU, of course, because they are integrated circuit, they are interconnected even more details and sometimes even faster than what you have. And most of the time, even faster than you have uh, in your motherboard system bus. Okay, so for your main memory to your CPU, currently we have their own memory bus to make sure that the transfer of data between your memory to your CPU get faster. And then for the, those external equipments, you have the I.O. bus. So in the bus, basically they have four um, four lines basically interconnects all those components. You have the control line, you have the address line, you have the data line, and the power line. So power usually is a common sense. You need power to run those things. So we are not covering the power that much. But the other three, which is the control, address, and data, is the most important architecture within your computer. Okay, so just remember that within your computer, all those in, uh, all those components are interconnected by these three components, which is the control lines, the address line, and the data line. Okay, so for the data line, so basically, if you have uh, a highway with 32 lanes this is what your uh, data bus looks like okay highway with 32 lanes okay when the highway with 32 lanes okay all those uh, data coming in uh, through those highway okay in terms of processor clock okay depending on one or zero means that either it has a car or don't uh, don't have a car okay so this is according to clock one row of car is coming so those who without highway list without car representing zero those who with car representing one example okay so for each clock tick tock tick tock there will be a pulse of vehicle coming in through your system bus so this one representing the information traveling through your system bus and then we have what we call address bus so Address bus is basically a data as well. However, this data representing the location of data, the real data that you need within the memory. Of course, when the CPU wants to look inside your main memory, they need to look using addresses. So they need to know the addresses. 
So based on this address, the CPU will request data from do, from that address to be inserted into the data bus. Okay. So however, okay, the number of address and data need to be balanced out. If you have less address, you means that you need uh, you have less address means that you have less location to access. Sometimes you have bigger data to get it. Okay, in case you have 32 bits of pass, sometimes they allocate 8 bit for address. You have 6, uh, 24 bit for data. So less the address is, the less location it can access. However, the bigger data, uh, it can carry at one time. However, if there are more addresses within the system bus and less data bus means that there are a lot more location it can access. However, only a few data can be carried in at one time. Next, we have what we call the control bus. So control bus, basically, they represent either you want to uh, the instruction that the CPU want to do with the data in that address. Okay. You have the address, you have the data, but what should you do with that data? Okay. So, basically, the CPU wants to either read or write. Okay. I O read or write. Okay. Or sometimes uh, we have the bus request or interrupt request as well. But mainly, if in terms of memory, it either read or write. If the CPU wants to read, or the CPU wants to write at the address location within the memory cell. What they want to write is the data. Okay, data from CPU or data from the memory. Okay, so I'll give you one example of how we use the system bus. Okay, so this is the example. However, I will show directly to the video. So this is how you read and write from the main memory. So in this case, So you look at the CPU wants to read from cell 06. This is the cell 06 within the RAM. The CPU will request on the data uh, on the. Okay, let's move back a little bit. Okay, the CPU will send out the read request from all those uh, memory location. Read request. Okay, and then they send read request. Okay under the control line so once the read request already sent it will send the addresses of where you want to request so in this case 06 so when the cpu send the data on the address line 06 this ram number one rejects those requests because 06 is not in its ram and now ram 2 will take the request because uh, they have the 06 uh, address inside it. So now look at the data inside 06. The data now will go down and travel to the data bus. And from the data bus, it will go directly to the processor. So this is where the processor want to read. In case the processor want to write, so firstly, they will send a rest, uh, it will send a write request. So the right will send into the cell 03. So in this case, RAM 2 will reject the request and RAM 1 will accept the request. So in this case, on the address bus, 03 will be sent. Okay, you see that RAM 2 reject the request and RAM 3 approve the uh, RAM 1 approve the request. Now data will be flowing from the CPU through the address bus and go directly to the RAM 1. Okay. So basically that is what we have under the system bus. So on system bus, you need to know three things where we have data bus, address bus, and control bus. And what are the roles as mentioned here where the data bus, okay, the width determine overall system performance based on the size of the data. Address bus, width determine the maximum possible memory capacity of the system. And the control bus determine the direction of the data address bus flow okay so this is are the role of those bus 
So what are the bus looks like? So the bus looks like the cables inside your PC. So these are the inter interconnection between component inside your PC under your motherboard. So you can imagine them as a highway from a certain city to another city, okay, like we have in the, uh, the country. So, however, okay, buses, because they interconnect a lot of components, they have the same problem as what we have on highway. So, if you look at the single bus problem, means that, okay, in case you have one highway that interconnects uh, around eight cities, one long highway interconnect eight cities, Okay, you have city 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are continuing under one highway until city 8. However, okay, so what happened when there are, okay, city A is a big country, a big city like Kuala Lumpur here, we have in Malaysia. Okay, big country and city 8 is the furthest away from Kuala Lumpur like, for example, in uh, Johor Bahru. Okay, so during holidays, what will happen? Is that there are seven or six? There are six more uh, cities between KL and Johor Bahru, and during holidays, people are coming out from KL to all those cities up up to Johor Bahru. So the problem is that the highway will get congested. Okay, we get congested because all those who want to go through all this location, they need to go the same road as those. Uh, those um, okay as the other users so, so when okay when this happen they are what we call bottleneck where you have bottleneck from the main city who wants to going out towards the rural area they have bottleneck happening in the uh, in the main city sorry I just got a phone call Okay, so when you have one straight highway with a lot of cities, usually we have bottleneck from the main city going out to the rural area. So to avoid this problem, you need a multiple highway. Okay, for each uh, city, you need a dedicated highway so that there will not be bottleneck at the main highway. So this is the same thing that we need on the system bus as well. So on the traditional bus architecture, okay, you have you have only one or two lines but however when you have multiple bus connection you have uh, you have distributed the bus according to the necessity of those component in this case we have three buses okay so in this case you have expansion bus interface here connecting all those expansion components main memory and the main system bus and on the cache is there are local bus here so sometimes okay uh, a little bit some components need a little bit more access to the bus like for example graphics okay video LAN, or everything else okay so we create another high speed bus okay so that it can gain access to the processor faster than the other component so this is where we have a lot of highway connecting all the cities so that there are less bottlenecking happening inside the motherboard okay so this way you have the high performance bus architecture so means that okay if you have single bus or multiple bus we better choose the multiple bus because based on the bus length if single bus you have more length means that you have a lot more delay okay and then when you have bottleneck okay you have aggregated data So we have three types of type of bus here that have given here. We have ISA, Nasution Architecture. We have PCI bus, PCIe, okay, uh, PCI Express under current technology. So these are the sample of bus architecture that we have inside your uh, motherboard. So under that, we have a lot more interface within your motherboard to, to connect under the system bus. Like for example, serial port, parallel port, and most importantly, the most familiar you have is the USB port. Okay, so you have your audio port as well. So and then you have the universal serial bus here. We have recently all of those ports uh, will uh, is been summarized under universal serial bus. 
in order to reduce the e-waste that being generated from cable that are not going to be used anymore. So they decided that, okay, we have uh, decided that all ports on the, the motherboard will be accessible under the USB port. Okay, so under the bus design, we have either type either dedicated or multiplex, bus width, address or data, timing, synchronous or asynchronous, method of arbitration, centralized or distributed, and data transfer type, the read or write. Uh, read, write. Uh, read modify write read after write or block so you have dedicated bus and multiplex bus okay but dedicated bus you have for only one function so currently the uh, dedicated one that we're going to use inside your pc usually are for graphics multiple multiplex bus is for use more than one function usually less important function comparing to the one that we have inside the dedicated bus Okay, so for bus width, you need to balance out address and data so that uh, more access, more area can be accessed. At the same time, more data can be inserted inside your PC for processing. And then for timing, we have asynchronous and uh, synchronous. So synchronous means that the events occurring under your system bus is based on the clock of your CPU. Asynchronous is based on event after event. So once event conducted, then we continue with another event, we continue with another event, after that, continue, continue, continue. However, we clock every ticks and talks, there are fixed instructions of what the bus have to do. So we clock is synchronous, without clock is asynchronous. And then lastly, we have a method of, uh, oh, this is the fourth one, method of arbitration. This is where you have, uh, you determine the, Priority of what can gain access under the bus. So this is where you have the arbiter. I mentioned before we have for polling, uh, which is uh, more important, uh, which interrupt is more important. You have the arbiter that can determine the, those kind of polling. So here are the arbiter is the one decide all those information. And then you have the data transfer type. What kind of data transfer types that you need for the bus to conduct? So either the read dedicated, write dedicated, read multiplex, write multiplex, read modify write, and read after write. So all of these are depending on the type of bus you have inside your motherboard. Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, I'll see you guys next week uh, under the new chapter 7. So that's all for me, Dr. Shavit from Zikamaru Zaman. Thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys later on. Bye.